questions to ask for a campaign with the confidence rising. I told WDF those switch good times are coming on even deep diving. Fan cams, reactions, watch alongs to the pride of London thriving. The Eagles of South they flying. Keep your eyes on us, we ain't hiding. Well, yes, guys, that was fast, wasn't it? I was going to speak about Lerma in the upcoming Transfer Weekly. However, it's been done already. Done so fast that I couldn't even get it out next week. But, obviously, this episode is the first episode of Done Deals. I'm very excited that this episode's coming out so quickly. Been a bit of a mad rush with all the videos lately. So, thank you very much, you guys, for watching. Um... This one's going to be a bit different because I haven't covered him in Transfer Weekly yet. I kind of have to cover him in this video right now. So this one's going to be a bit longer than usual. I'm going to get the other guys' involvement in this as well. They're going to talk about their thoughts on Lerma as well. So, you know, um, let's get into it. Obviously, before I start, I need to have a massive shout out to Statman Dan. Uh, he's got a Twitter thread, it's probably going to be scrolling now as I speak, but he's got a Twitter thread which just goes so far in depth with everything about Lerma you could ever need to know, ever want to know, uh, with stats to back it up as he does as the Statman Dan. Um, but obviously it's helped me a hell of a lot looking through that in the research of him today, which is how are we able to get this video out so fast for you guys. So um, yeah. Hopefully you guys click the link in the description and have a look through it and, you know, give Dan some love as well. The 28-year-old 5'10 Colombian midfielder has just signed for Crystal Palace on a free transfer. He officially joins on July the 1st, which means that we've um, signed him on a pre-contract because that July or the end of June is when his contract at Bournemouth finishes. So he's then able to come to us. Uh, it looks like he's been done on a pre-contract. I'm happy this has been done so fast and announced because I'm sure that a player of his calibre going on a free transfer is going to be someone that other teams around us like West Ham or Fulham are going to be looking at him thinking it's a great free transfer to strengthen the ranks. However, he has joined Bournemouth in 2018 for £28 million and signed a five-year deal and it's just run out. So getting someone of that quality, of that much money, a free transfer is always going to be looking good from the start. He's a very, very versatile player because he's able to play in the defensive and a box-to-box -box midfield role. This means that with him in the team, we can play many different types of formations. We can play him in a double pivot with Cech de Corre, which will mean that both of them will be sitting deep and will be playing out from the back. Both of them are very composed on the ball. And they'll both be taking away some defensive duties because... At both teams, they seem to be doing the only defensive role, the only marshal in that midfield of their team. But with um both of the team, but with both of them in the team together, they can hopefully take that load off of each other. Um, if you look at the heat map, you can see that Lerma is very comfortable moving around all areas of the pitch. It's very spread out in where he plays and where he likes to pick up the ball. Um, having him as maybe even a, an 8 on the left side, he's very comfortable on that left side as well. Look at the heat map, left side, right side, he can play anywhere. Um, it also shows that he, he can screen the back line a lot because this the right the defensive side um, is very lit up all across the board um, because he's just very comfortable to move around there. Uh, it shows that he's played a very central role at Bournemouth, so you know maybe Cech de Corre can move up to an 8 at some points and maybe Lerma could drop into a six or we could play a, a thing of one of them sits back and the other one joins the attacks to help us go forwards and still leave someone behind and you know we, we can open up many many options with a free transfer like this I'm really excited to see how it goes. Uh, Jefferson Lerma's got an absolutely incredible injury record he's only missed one game all season this year with 30, 37 starts and 37 complete appearances um the in he's only had one injury before I think the only injury before that you have to go all the way back to November 2020 so he's very good at not getting injured and that's something that Crystal Palace players love to do is get injured um he's also got a lot of energy and desire we've seen that when we play against him even though he did try and absolutely kill Will for a few years ago in the last game of the season but it shows that he's got that fight that desire that we need in the Palace team and someone actually fights for the shirt um, someone to sort of press and to pressure the ball like Gallagher did. And that's something I think we've missed a little bit this season. 
I think the only minor downside is that he's only 5 foot 10 as a defensive midfielder. We've sort of got that same problem with Decore. However, his leap is incredible. He can jump just as high as the people who are 6 foot plus. It's a very minor disadvantage for him, but his leap can make up for it. On to some stats now uh, to back up the points that I've made. I will be reading from the screen a little bit, so apologies. Uh, in 36, 37 starts in 37 total appearances, he scored 5 goals and got 0 0.9 shots per 90 on an average of all season. Uh, it's been really good because he's played in a 6 row and an 8 row, like I've said, in a DM. Uh, he's also filled in uh, midfield as an 8 row as well, trying to help advance the team. Also, when Bournemouth had a few injuries, he's played at centre-back. Uh, one of the centre-backs of a back three, not a back four. But still, very versatile, showing that he can play everywhere. Reminds me a little bit of Kayate, defensive midfield, box-to-box -box and centre-back. Um, just lacking the height a little bit. Also getting three assists, three expected assists all seasons. So that's a bit unfortunate for him. Uh, 54.5 touches per 90, which shows he loves to get on the ball. He also displays a great array of passing with four big chances created all season. Uh, with 82% passing accuracy all season as well. <clears throat> this is great. 82% all over the pitch when going forwards, passing, defending. Great. Absolutely incredible. Uh, 1.3 interceptions and 1.4 tackles per 90. He's a little bit more of a passive defender. He presses out to the ball very fast with much intensity, which is what make, what leads up to the opposition players making mistakes. He doesn't go flying in very much, but still his tackling method is very, very effective. Whereas Decore is the complete opposite. He does like to go flying into tackle, but both of them seem to come out of the ball at all times. And... Having one that does each in our team, it only means that we're just going to be stronger defensively. Also with his passing stats, as I said a minute ago, if they're both defending, then one of them can help with the attack. One of them can focus a bit more on going forwards at a time. So we will have another dimension to our play if we do play a 4-2-3-1. So we have two sitters. The only issue with that formation is we need fullbacks. Fullbacks, I'm not going to talk about it because you know what I'm saying about that. Um... Like Decore, um, however, uh, he does like to pick up a yellow, seven yellows in the league so far, uh, which means him and Decore, um, they've both got a, an appetite for a yellow card. However, um, if they're both in the team at the same time, they're both going to be sharing the defensive workload instead of purely the only one doing it in the midfield. So hopefully that will go down a bit and they can both be a little bit more reasonable with their defending. All right, that's enough of me talking in this done deals episode so far. Let's see what the Eagle Eyed football team thinks about this Jefferson Lerma signing to Crystal Palace. Yes, people, how are we doing? And it's official. Jefferson Lerma is a Crystal Palace player signing on a three-year deal. Um, and he'll join us on the 1st of July once his contract at Bournemouth expires. Um, JC's asked us to throw a quick little video giving you our thoughts on it. I'm aware that the camera's a bit shaky, but that's just the way I'm holding my phone. Um... Overall, I think it's a good signing. Um, I think it's definitely, uh, I'd like to say, maybe a like-for-like -like replacement for James MacArthur. I know that Lerma's got a good ability to be a box-to-box -box player, so that was what Maka was for a lot of his time at Crystal Palace. So hopefully Jefferson Lerma can can do a bit of that. Um, I'm happy with the deal. I think it's going to be good that we've got a deal over the line, even though we've got no manager. But um, yeah, overall, happy with the signing. Um, Jefferson Lerma, welcome to Crystal Palace and um, yeah hopefully there's a few more deals still to be done before the window closes um, yeah that's about it from me really um, not much else to say um, and yeah stay tuned for more reaction to all future signings and thanks for watching Up Palace and I'll see you later it's Eagle Eyed Nate signing off Big up everyone Rich here from Eagle Eyed Football and yes the famous words of Fabrizio Romano. Here we go. It is official. Jefferson Lerma has signed. And honestly, excited. Really excited about this signing. We've been crying out for extra midfield cover. And this is even before the fact that obviously Luca and MacArthur are both leaving the club. Or both left the club. Sorry. Um, let me just go straight into it. Um, another dynamic midfielder. We've obviously got Czech who's been fantastic for us in this debut season another dynamic midfielder who I would argue is better going forward 
then check the courier. So credit to Czech who's trying to get forward, but it's a wayward shot. Lerman's come up with a few goals this season. You know, he's an aerial threat as well, uh, which will be good for set pieces on both ends of the, the field. Um, and just just watching him play, just so comfortable on the ball. Um, his ball manipulation's um, brilliant as well. Sometimes he's cheeky, he flicks the balls on the player's head. Like, it, he's just a very, very composed midfielder. And I think the balance that him and, and the Korean could strike up would also then help um, Eze get a lot more freedom as well. So, honestly, massively um, happy about the signing. Uh, Rumours here that, that he could also play at right back, which would be a great touch, even though we still need a right back. Um, you know, and, and look at the times where the Korean was either like, suspended or had to go off. Like, he, he can then be, a, a, I think, an adequate replacement to be in that number six position. So, you know what? Buzzing about this one. And listen, Jefferson Lerma is now red and blue. Get in. Hey, everyone. It's Dan, a.k.a. Down to 10. Just giving my thoughts on uh, on the Jefferson Lerma, who's been officially announced today. I think he's a really, really good signing. Uh, he's come on a free. I don't know what his wages are, but... As long as they're on something around about or less than Luca, I think that'll be that's a really good swap out. For me, I think he's uh, one an upgrade on the players we have, and two, his positional versatility is really important. He can play in a double pivot with Decore. He can also potentially play in Schlupp's position in that more box to box role. Um, I think he's a bit more defensive minded, so I'll, I'm. Jury's out on whether he can do that, but he's certainly got the passing ability to do it. Um, he can also play as an emergency centre-back if we really needed to as well. He played there for Bournemouth last season uh, in some parts. Um, and I think his passing is his main attribute. He's really good at passing. He's clearly, a, from watching him, he's a very aware player. He's very aware of when perhaps centre-backs need, need an option. And then he's very good at executing that pass in, in one touch. So I think he'll complement Shek Decore really, really well. And I think as well he'll take some of that defensive responsibility away from Shek Decore as well. I think he's very he's not one to really dive into tackles, but he's certainly very good at s slowing down the opposition play and cutting out passing lanes and things like that. Things that stats can't really um really show. And yeah, I think it's is something going forwards in, in the right direction. And I hope that we can build more on this. Anyway, have a good day. Thanks for watching. First of all, welcome Jefferson Lerma to Crystal Palace. It's nice to see that we've made a signing. Um, this, is, this is exciting, um, especially in terms of what we are able to do now with our midfield options. We're able to see if we can push check into a perhaps developing him into a partnership with Lerma which is something that I think we've been lacking um, you know to see now a definite f midfield pairing of Lerma and of Decore is going to be something to see especially coming into the next season um, hopefully Hopefully we make some more signings. I'm hoping for more, obviously, with social media. Uh, we've seen The Athletic have tweeted that, you know, for, for a big signing, we need a sale. So it's, it, yeah, but still, Lerma, uh, officially announcing Lerma uh, is great. Uh, so welcome. Just a shame that we didn't get the Anderson, um, we didn't get the Anderson uh, announcement video that we all wanted to see but hey uh he got the boxing gloves on in the, in the end he got them on so you know a little bit of a reference so you know a bit of a cheeky wink cool but yeah welcome jefferson looking good in red and blue on for more signings fingers crossed that's it from me yeah it's, it's great to hear what the others think about the transfer i'm really loving how they announced how they announced it with the anderson punch to lerma in the face uh, a few weeks ago in our game against them. Uh, only little gripe is maybe Anderson should have been in that boxing video as well, but 
oh well, who cares? We've actually got a player before the actual window starts. So this is uncharted territory for Crystal Palace. But overall, I would give this transfer a definite 9 out of 10 for Crystal Palace. Purely because he's one of Bournemouth's best players when doing the Twitter test, as Dan said. They're really gutted that he's leaving them on a free, and he's someone that will walk straight into our team and will play for the badge. Um, the fact that this has happened so fast gives me a little bit of confidence that maybe we've actually got a plan that we're going to do something, that we're going to do all our business early, and we've got stuff planned and ready to go. Uh, also, when um, uh, in his interview, he said that he's looking forward to the project. The project, that's one of two things. First one is... Either we've got a manager, we just can't announce him yet because of maybe contractual reasons. So maybe that's July 1st, we can see. The other one is Dougie's been lying to these man. He's been selling them a dream just to get into Crystal Palace. But either way, I don't care. He's signed for Crystal Palace. And hopefully it's something that we can do a little bit more. Not the lying, but signing more players. But as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. This is JC from Eagle Eye Football. This is the first episode of Done Deals. Hopefully, we can have a few more Done Deals by the end of this summer window. But anyway, JC from Eagle Eye Football. Please like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, up the palace. Eagles. Make sure you check out Transfer Weekly.